This is the Shady Records Roundtable Special. We are celebrating 15 years of Eminem's Intimacy. Shady Records. With Reef. Yes. Cut it out, man. Stop. And also the release of the Shady XV Project in stores Clap. November 24th. Clap. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. And we are also celebrating Boys, 10, good. Years, Boys. 10 years of Shade 45. Boys, hey. Here on, Shade, on uh, Sirius XM. And I am joined by, uh, first up, he's the president of Shady Records, the CEO of Goliath Artists. He's an attorney, an artist manager, a label exec, a Michigan State alumni. Please welcome... Mr. Paul Rosenberg. That was good. And, and you. you happen to be wearing a Spartan's, uh, you know, zip up. So I. Yes, it's a hoodie, actually. Yes. But zip up is, I don't know what that is. But <laughs> a zipper upper. It's a hoodie with a zipper on it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that was a great introduction. I'm glad to be here on 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 my station with uh, my partners, whose station it is, with talking about our record label. That we made together as partners. Yo, that intro was much, much more than needed. <laughs> well, next. Oh, wait, wait for I'm yours, saying, buddy. Next. Yeah, let's. Yo, I Here we a, go. Come on. Get a fucking drum roll or something. I'm happy this to welcome. Be good. I'm happy to welcome Shady Records CEO, multi platinum selling artist, MC extraordinaire, global superstar, and Dallas Cowboys fan, ladies and gentlemen, Marshall Mathers, aka Eminem. Oh. Incredible, oh. incredible, wait, 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 hold on, wait. Oh. incredible, <laughs> incredible basketball player, where's that, I didn't, Sweetness. Did, wait, did you say it, there might have been so much applause, <laughs> I, I didn't hear that part, it may have got lost, he's got a applause. basketball um, nickname, really, what sweetness, Sugar hey, <laughs> that's nice, yeah, well, there's other voices in here, so yes. we should introduce, because we have, <laughs> that, that was funny, <laughs> we have uh, the human Bluetooth, America's favorite bootlegger, and moisturizer. And the moisturizer. Yeah. DJ Who Kid. Yeah. yeah. I'm in here. We have super producer, super MC, and he's now very slim. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Porter. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some water or, or a non carbon a non carb snack? Yeah. Would you like some <laughs> I'm, I'm some puffed <laughs> air? <laughs> Mr. Porter, would you like a microphone, or you would just want to sit in the background and Man, just I'm make chilling. comments? Would you like a water juice? That, that's cool I'm, too. I'm, I'm Lizzo, right now, I'm playing. The, I'm playing the Paul. No, Mr. Right. Porter, it would it would be very imperative. Yes. And and actually, really cool. If every time I said something, maybe you just went woo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing today. All right, so gentlemen, welcome. First of all, thank you for coming. This is a. a, a a very important event. Fifteen years. Yep. Fifteen years old. Yep. You're like a, a, a raging adolescent. Not in this game. It's like being a <laughs> something else. But I, you know, a lot has transpired. You know, labels have come, labels have gone. The music business is obviously radically transformed, and Shady still stands strong. How does that make you both feel? <clears throat> well, Marshall, I feel pretty good about that. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, that's supposed to be you. That's not you. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, I mean, right. how how can it not feel good? It feels great. I mean, I, I think that hey, to to start. I mean, we started in 1999 with yeah. uh with with our deal with with Interscope, who have been our partners ever since in 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 Shady Records, and it was just really a, an exciting idea. And you know, I don't want to sound corny, but it was a, it was a dream. Like we both, you know, let let's have a record label. Like it would be amazing. I mean, you know, we came up looking at the same stuff the same way and, you know, sort of being fans of the same types of types of artists and labels and, you know, thought maybe we could do something like people prior to us had done um, in our own way. Yeah, I, I wasn't actually I mean, when, you know, when Paul came to me with the idea, it was more like I was more so I was more or less trying to use it as a as a vehicle because I, I wasn't sure if it could actually work or not. So I was using it more as a vehicle to try to put my group on. So D12, it was more like, a, yo, this could be what could help us get them. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. And then when we found out it could actually work, that's when it was like, what the fuck? This is crazy. This could actually work. Because it wasn't, it's not the safe route for somebody, <clears throat> you know, you were already coming off of multi-platinum success, touring, this, that. Yeah. To, to none, of it's, none of it's been a safe route, but yeah, you're right. And and as a matter of fact, there were some people who were like, well, why are you distracting him from his own music? And he should be focused on his own career. What are you doing? You're going to get him off track. 
And I'm like, well, I don't, you know, I don't think you know what he's capable of. I don't think you know what I'm capable of. And we believe in this and we're going to do it. Absolutely. And here we are 15 years later, uh, a lot of success stories under your belt, broken new artists, broken superstars, won Oscars, you know, just one Oscar. Oh, Oscar. Okay. One Oscar. Oscar. Um, and Oscar now, and, and now we're at the point where you're kind of, you know, celebrating your success. You have the Shady XV project. Yeah, Shady 15. It is XV, but those are Roman numerals, so it's right. 15. But For the, it just looks cooler. It's also more like a, to me, it's more like a thank you to the fans and, you know what I'm saying, everybody who's supported us from day one. You yep. know, it's kind of a thank you to those people because, you know, obviously without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing right now, so. We wouldn't be here rocking. Woo! Woo! Uh-huh. <laughs> Woo! My voice is kind of deep. I'm Thank sorry, you, guys. Kid. Whoa. That was Whoa. that was good. Thank you. All right. Um, so you mentioned uh, just just a second ago how initially you were looking at it as okay, this is a chance to put my boys on uh, who you had been you know working hard with for years and years, kind of toiling away before kind of hitting it big, and this was your chance to you know give them the shot. It was an opportunity for us all to you know for it to happen. And they were the first signing, obviously. Yeah, they were the first signing. And then, um, you know, from there, when, when, when we saw a little bit of success with that, once we saw that, we were like, oh. Let's do it again. This could, you know, this could actually work, you know. Well, in the spirit, in the spirit of talking about D12 and Devil's Night, uh, the album, which came out June 5th, 2001, uh, I want to just quickly... <clears throat> go into memory lane a little bit and we're going to play purple pills which is uh featured on the shady 15 or xv for those that don't know project on shade 45 the shady records round table sh shit round the shady table? records round shady records round <laughs> table record round table is it taper <laughs> shady records round table oh, special yeah. here on shade 45 shady records sound rabel <laughs> round table special featuring Eminem and Paul Rosenberg yo another motherfucking exclusive <laughs> why 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 the <laughs> We're oh, back. Don't, don't do drugs. The, <laughs> the Shady Records Roundtable wow. Special. You know, as we go through the show, we're going to kind of go into the vault a little bit. We've got some very go special some moments. Go into some more of that. Obscurity. <laughs> St <laughs> stuff that you've done for, for Moments for we'd like to forget on Shade 45. <laughs> you know, in, in celebrating 15 years of uh, your label and, your, and 10 years of your radio station. So... Uh, that I don't was, know if it's celebrating. It's more like mourning. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, there's more. There's more. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, um, he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's move forward just quickly to the next release on Shady Records, which was obviously huge for, for both of your careers. Uh, it was the 8 Mile Project and the soundtrack. Yep. And just very quickly, there's no pressure here, obviously, but <clears throat> you're acting for the first time on film. Uh, you're putting together the score and the soundtrack together. What was it like going through all that? Well, the acting part was easy because I'm acting like I like you right now. So, <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> the natural. Yeah. No, no, no. It was. Uh, you say no pressure. Now there's no pressure. No, but at the, I, I, but at that time, sarcastic. if we if we fucked that project up and mm -hmm. that soundtrack up and that film up, it would not have been good, and and it would have been a bad bad thing. So we we again we're taking risk, right? By by exposing. Marshall at that point of his career to to something that, you know, had the potential to not work. But and really in the film has been on a lot on cable recently. And, you know, as a hip hop fan, certainly I and I'm sure everybody in this room appreciates the use of not just the soundtrack and the original music, but the songs that were included. Just the way the film opens with shook ones like they, yeah. it, they, like no other movie in the fucking universe has done it like that. You know, we picked the songs. We worked really hard to to push them through. Um, and, you know, a lot of it, a lot of those records were coming up w from this, the scene that Marshall came up in and Mr. Porter came up in and the sort of hip hop shop battling. Like those were the records that everybody was rhyming on back then. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they would queue up records like Shook Ones or or, um, 
<clears throat> what were some of the other last records? Days. That Showbiz and AG record. Yep. The um, the Last Days, the Onyx record. Yeah, yeah. Onyx record and and uh, the OC record. Times up. Yep. Oh, wow. I mean, those were the records people would just go crazy rapping on. Yep. So we wanted to recreate that feeling, and you know, obviously stuff that that Marshall liked too. And that we're not even touching on the actual original music that. No, that was this was compo- all the licenses. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, here we are 10 years later and, and uh, battling in the MC battle scene and the leagues and everything are bigger than they've ever been. I mean, and to the point where, <clears throat> you know, you guys staged the total slaughter. Like, did you have any inkling kind of of, of the effect of, of uh, how that culture was going to be affected? Yeah, no question. It, it brought it to a, to a mainstream film going audience. And, you know, that was one of the goals of, of the movie was to, to show the scene he came up in, which happened to be that, which happened to be, you know, a lot of freestyling and battling. So we wanted to show that to everybody. So I, I think if anything, it just maybe helped it thrive more because it brought more attention to it. I don't think anybody, you know, like mainstream America kind of saw battling and was like, oh, shit, we got to get on this. And then you see all these fucking garbage battles and it just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm-hmm. Fucking shit's in a, a Mountain Dew commercial or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's 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 uh, it, it, I don't think it did that in that regard. I think that it just helped propel the battling scene to make it even bigger and, and draw more attention to it. If it helped do that, I'm, I'm super proud of that because you know, that's what I came up in and, and now it, it just feels like it's thriving more than ever. So, and you're, you're a very avid fan of the whole scene. So absolutely. That movie showed, it showed a lot of what it, what it looked like from our eyes too. Like <laughs> when I looked at that, that's what it looked like from, from, for me, like it was more, it was definitely nostalgic anyway. Like you can talk about like how they would battle on corners in New York and we would hear those stories. Mm. Mm-hmm. That was our story. That was like the way the way that movie was, like that was just the Detroit side of it. I'm pretty sure there was other people that had their sides of it. So but that brought a whole different I think a different feel to it too. Like it wasn't like saying like, Oh, it popped off because of that movie, but it was definitely a great I think it was a monumental thing just for when we came up as kids, so I was, Woo! I was, I was, thank you. Thank it you. was a good building block. I'm giving I think, a guy for that. You know, there's life. many pieces to that though. Like we didn't just do something that was like, right. Oh my God, we discovered something or some shit. I, you know, it just had never been documented and, and the drama of it had never been portrayed in such a way. Yeah. Because that shit is serious mm-hmm. to lose a battle is like, you're losing your life. You're, you're, mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. like, I mean, this is, this is how, we're going to make it and do something with our lives. And you if you lose you that, there's that threat of that actually felt like it just got taken away from me because you beat me in this battle. And now everyone knows that. And now no one's going to talk about me anymore. No one cares about me. Nobody gives a fuck. I'm going to go eat some worms. <laughs> <laughs> Season's over. You're out of the playoffs. Beat go it. home. Take, right. your, take your cleats and, and you shoulder got, pads. And, and you ain't going on YouTube and putting something out to make yourself hot again because it didn't exist. That's so right. you lose the battle, tough luck. Yeah. Not, and you're anonymous. So how, how, bad, how bad do you want it? And do you want to work hard enough at it to... You can't lose. You can't lose. You have to just keep going up. Otherwise, your buzz and, and your name and everything just goes down. So, And certainly for you, you are a veteran of not only the Detroit battle scene, but, you know, the whole Rap Olympics experience, which, you know, essentially was, was the, uh, the catalyst for, for you taking a, a giant step in your career, I would say. Yeah, I mean, certainly that was one of the things I feel like that helped, you know, even uh, 97 Scribble Jam, like just, just getting in a car and just going wherever I can be at to any type of, you know, any type of opportunity I had to make a name for myself, I would just try to do whatever. So I, I think we can't discuss 8 Mile without discussing Lose Yourself. Well, why don't we play Lose Yourself? Yeah, let's yeah, play Lose Yourself. Yeah. Come back and discuss Lose Yourself. Let's do it. Why don't we lose ourselves? 15 Roundtable Special featuring Eminem and Paul Rosenberg. Suck it, Marshall. Nah, I, I'm, I'm gonna leave that alone. Marshall, I'm... sit back and suck it, huh? Oh my God. Put your. Suck it, Marshall, on Shade 45. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, crazy. the funny part about this is. The funny part about this is. What's funny about that? What, Nothing Is there something changed. wrong with that? Like Nothing has changed. I was about to ask, do you guys miss. 
those times. Sucking what do you it. Mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, that too, maybe. But miss you... what times? This shit. That's an ongoing joke. Seconds. It's a running joke. It happens every <laughs> oh, fucking day. Me. Right. It hasn't no, went away. So what are you talking about? It's no miss expiration what? date, bro. It's not right. milk. It's nothing. <laughs> this is nothing new. It's, it's an ongoing here, unreal joke that <laughs> sixty will years old, never eighty go years away. old. <laughs> Suck it. Hey, suck it. <laughs> no, you suck it. This might, this, right. this, this might be a, a weird question. Sit back question. and suck it. Do you, you have a suck take it your, question? Take who your kid? dentures out and suck it. Who kid? <laughs> who who, who kid? Do you have a uh, suck it question? Uh, I have a very suck it question. Who created the skit thing? Like who, who who's, Whose idea was that? Well, skits were popular back, back when, when M's first album on, on Aftermath. Uh, Interscope came out. Skits were still kind of popular, and we mm. we came up in the you know really obsessed and still are fascinated with those early '90s records that had skits like you know De La is probably the classic mm. example, but okay. but a lot of people did it back then. So I think yeah. that was the inspiration, right? Yeah, for sure. And the shit brings it, it brings personality to an album. That's the one thing I always felt like with artists when they do skits. It's like okay, your songs are telling us who you are, and now you've got this skit that's kind of bringing me into that world. I want to be in that world. I want to know what, you know, it, if it, when if like De La Soul, whoever had a skit on their album, it made you feel like it made you feel like you knew them more just because, oh, this is how they are. This is how they, they joke around and shit. Mm. This is how they when they fuck around. This is what they do. And they got a si similar sense of humor. Yeah. You know, with me and my friends or whatever, like, yeah. you know, and it, it was always and it was cool. Interludes, interludes were cool because it would break shit up. You know, it would break up, you know, the songs and, and, and it would add this entertainment value that was, I don't know. In character. It gave the record more mm -hmm. character. Yeah, for sure. You know. And created characters kind of recurring, too. Yep. That, too. It's kind of We're going to get to that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I want to bring us back full Ooh. circle from, uh, you know, we were coming off Lose Yourself Ooh. and, oh, he's here. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hide your daughters or sons. I'm not sure. <laughs> Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Hide your kids. <laughs> Somebody's touching me. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Porter. This is Stop. Uh, That's yes. fucked up. Uh, Ken shit. Kniff, another another character. <laughs> I mean, not. We're we're gonna get to Ken. Okay. I want to get to Fifty Cent. Yeah. Ken Ooh. might get to you. Oh no. <laughs> and uh, he made his you know debut on Shady Records via. The Eight Mile soundtrack, but he made his major label debut, right? Sort of with us. He first had a deal with Columbia. They mm. put out How to Rob, and he recorded an album for them that they never put out. But they put out like a in Europe, they put out like an EP, mm -hmm. the Power of a Dollar EP. Mm -hmm. So it, technically, it wasn't the first. And then after um, he wasn't with Columbia anymore, he released Guess Who's Back, which was the record that really got our attention. And I want to I want to talk about that because this was your the superstar that yeah. you signed to 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 the label. No like, question. And uh, before him, there was not one like him, and there will never will be again. Ever. Nope. Uh, just kind of take us back a little bit just in that period of time when, when he was on the radar and the decision process and, and uh, you know, how things uh, kind of transpired in signing him and so forth. Briefly, if you can. Well, I remember at one point, I don't remember where we were. I was maybe I told this story before, but we were somewhere doing a show or something. And, and I remember DJ Head. Our old DJ, he um he had uh Life's on the Line. He had the Life's on the on the Line record and played it. And I think that was before everything happened with Fifty. Yeah, yeah. that was that was isn't that from Power of a Dollar? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. so that was, that was the, the first record. I, I think that was the first record that I had heard before from. How to Rob. Yeah, yeah, because you like that beat. You used to you used to rap on that beat. Uh, which one? The murder. Yeah, yeah. that one. Life's okay, on the Line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I thought you were talking about the other one. Um, yeah, no. That was, I think, the first record, and I was like, that was the first one I had. I remember hearing, and I was like, holy shit, this dude is fucking dangerous. And little did you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, he was like, on some MC shit, was like, yo, he's he's a fucking threat. Like, he's a lyrical threat. Like, and, and it was, it was, it was the way he was saying this shit, and, and he just made you believe it. Like, fifth, when he said a fucking, like, Whatever. I mean, he's always been like that, but it was like something that I hadn't heard before. Like, yeah, yo, this dude, like, like he's he he's he sounds like he sounds like he's going to fuck you up. He's talking. <laughs> he's talking like yeah. and that's how like, you know, shit, man, like rappers like 
like when NWA first came out, and, you know, you had those groups. It was like this is so crazy because like it would, you know, it was shit was said with such conviction that it was like it felt like Ice Cube was gonna come out the radio and punch you in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say that about Fifty Two. It was like it's the same shit. It's like it sounds like he he believes in what he's saying right now, and if the you know it was, it was the passion behind it, and it was the you know the way he said it and the lyrics and all that shit was like yo, he's a threat. Yeah. So then, so then, cut to to time later, and you know, Fifty was was I think he, that Columbia dropped him. I don't know if it was before he got shot or after. Who kid? What was it? Uh, they dropped him after he got. So shot. he gets shot. Not bad enough, right? You're sitting in the hospital, but then your label fucking drops you. Crazy. So you know that's not that's not an easy place to come back from. Mm-mm. But um, he hooked up with Shaw, and he hooked up with Theo, um, his his lawyer at the time, and Theo was uh. One of my one of my close associates and partners and started feeding me the music like, yo, I know you know about 50, but you have to hear the new shit he's doing. And I'm like, new shit. I didn't even know he was going to be rapping anymore. Like, you mm-hmm, know, the, right. the word had reverberated around the industry that this guy was, you know, pretty much a rap. So I was checking it out and I was like, whoa, this is pretty crazy. I'm going to let Marshall hear it. Marshall was was f- we were still filming eight mile at the time mm-hmm. and he was. Filming I think I movie. was riding around bumping that shit more yeah. than anything I was recording myself. Right. So you were filming the movie, you were <clears throat> recording the music for the movie, and finishing the 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 finishing touches on your your album, your solo album too, at the same time. The the M M show. Oh yeah. So he he you know, yeah. it was it was crazy. And once once we finished filming the movie and Marshall had a second to focus on the music, that's when we got we got serious about it. We thought, hey, if Dre likes this, he'd be a perfect partner for this. Mm. Since he has been through the craziness, since he does make the best beats in the world, since if he's feeling this, it would be a, a, a perfect sort of match. Right. But I think there was also something to be said about the same credibility factor that Dre gave to me. Yeah. We could use that with Fifth. Because anybody who had their doubts about me signing him or anything like that, it was like, you know... Anybody for for anybody who didn't like me or was like, oh, man, now, you know, what's going to happen with fifth is, it, you know, it was a, it was more of a, a stamp. Dre stamp could not hurt in any any way you go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? With anything. So it was it was more about like, you know, making sure that we didn't fuck this up and making sure that, you know, especially back then, anybody who hated me is just going to turn his music off, you know. Like right. if it was just us, if it was just me, like I, that's how I yeah. think I was probably feeling at the time was like, man, I don't want to fuck this up. I just want to make I want to make sure that this shit works because I want to make sure that any like I don't want him to not get a chance by certain people, whoever, by turning the radio off or not even buying it. Because, oh, man, he's with him. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to make sure like we make this shit official and Dre putting his stamp on it makes it even bigger for you know, even more so than what I just said, bringing it to an even bigger audience, because now you got Dre's fans, you know what I'm saying? Like you've got who like Dre has so many fucking fans. It was like yo, between the two of us, man, let's try to if we link up, this could be a crazy idea. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. And as the mm. kind of record <laughs> as the recording mm. process was was going along, at what point were you guys like, whoa, this is going to be a problem. Immediately. He came out making records. I remember he took a trip out to Detroit. He took a trip out to L.A. Everything that I heard was stop you in your tracks. Wow. He, Crazy. He, he, he could not miss. Like which every, all which, which every, all made Get Rich, I'm, I'm assuming, yeah, right? Well, yeah, all the, of course. We, we were fighting to see what wasn't going to make the album because there were so many good records. Yeah. They're, 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 in hindsight, I mean, every record... Every song on that Get Rich or Die Trying is probably fucking incredible and top notch. And I think that was one, you know, in in hindsight, it probably was too many songs, but there was nothing we could get rid of. Like we, I right. think, I think, I don't know if we kept everything, but I remember just thinking like, fuck, what, what can we get rid of? Yeah, it's there's like even, 20 records on there, even yeah, with like, the bonus cuts. You and... can't even get rid of anything. And then, and then it's like, what, what if you get that one song you do get rid of? That could have been somebody's favorite song because the shit that he was recording at that time was like fucking nothing I had heard like it at that point in time. Right. Like so, it was so it was so new sounding and so fucking, you know, it was it, it, it was everything, man. It was it was it was dangerous. It was like I knew I knew Fifth would get the respect from MCs and, and you know, just everybody. I, I don't know, man. It was it was 
it was crazy because he was it was like he was hitting all areas. Yeah, he was hitting the club. He was hitting the street. He was hitting pop radio. He was hitting urban radio. And he, he gave Hooker a job. All the bases. <laughs> gave me a job. I think the main... mixtapes, they crushed the fucking mixtapes. Nobody's over. ever going to do mixtapes like that again. <laughs> Yo, that was the end of it. Like, after that, it was like when they was done, I was like, I didn't want to hear no more mixtapes after that. How much, <laughs> how much, like... this guy made so much money off selling mixtapes. He, he pulled up one day in front of BT in a fucking Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I am not making this up. That was, I, that was my money. Yeah, nobody, car. nobody ever, <laughs> nobody ever did it like that with the mm -hmm. mixtape thing and nobody, can never do that ever again. No, they killed it. It was over. They, 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 forget it. People were fiending for those things. Yeah. The fiending. That's the thing because uh, there was a story with his music and combined with M and Dre, that's like a no-brainer. It was 10 million off the back. Like, I mean, of course, of but the records, the records, the records. That, that's why you would bring it up. You, you couldn't even take a record out because if you take a record out, uh, yeah, you can have the all of those elements, but unless you have the right records yeah. and they got the fucking energy and excitement and danger that 50s records had man it, it i felt like i felt like all we need to do is get people to listen just once and that's it listen once well they listened just <laughs> give us your attention for two seconds turn this record on and you will not be able to turn it off well speaking of records that you can't turn off from the uh shady 15 yeah. album or project coming can't out november 20 <laughs> November 24th, let's go into 50 Cent in the Club, produced by Dr. Dre. This is the Shady 15 Roundtable Special, featuring Eminem and Paul Rosenberg. Obi Trice. Let's talk about Obi, uh, what he meant to the label, um, you know, Detroit, born and bred, and, uh, you know, had sold, you know, a couple million albums and really uh, was like the, you know, a very important component of the label. Talk about that in, in the context of, of the, the history. Yeah, so o Obi was another chance to, to sign another artist from Detroit, um, you know, which we, we always are excited about if there's somebody coming out of Detroit that, that we think would fit what we're doing. So um, M's old DJ, my old um, DJ and friend from college, um, DJ Head, was playing me Obi's first 12-inch, which was um, called The Well-Known Asshole. And they, they put it out independently um, on vinyl themselves on their label. And I thought he was crazy. I, I thought he was a perfect fit for us. And at the same time, Bizarre from D12 was a big fan of Obi's too and brought it to Marshall like, yo, you got to check this kid out, Obi. And, you know, his name was crazy and just stuck with you the first time you heard it. And so we were like, we got to find this kid and, you know, sit down with him and see what he wants to do. Yo, I think Obi rapped from me. Yeah, I think uh, Bizarre may have brought him by to rap for Yeah, him. I think he, mm. yeah, he brought him by the studio to rap for me. And just hearing him rap a cappella was like, oh, shit. And, and it was something about, you know, A, content, skill. And there was something about Obi's delivery that was his voice yeah. was so strong. It was like, you know, it would fucking cut you. So it was like, it was, it was a combination of that. And then Obi being. He was a new cat, but didn't sound like a new cat. Mm -hmm. It was too, too seasoned. Yeah, for, yeah, super seasoned and like you know, super confident, confident, likable, you know, kind yeah, of kind great of a storyteller too. Great storyteller, kind of a character. You know, it was like you, whenever he come around, it's like Obi. You know, it was like he was just fun to be around. You know, and just a a good dude. You know, and it was like it was fun to work with him because it was like it was just so you know he was he was quick. In the studio, but he didn't fuck around. He meant business. It was, you know, it yeah. was just and a character, just, just, you know, funny and up, up for whatever. Just, you know, happy to be to be down and and have the opportunity. And you know, we we loved working with him. And that that first album is incredible. You go back and listen to Cheers now. Oh man, yeah, the beats. That beats album, I, I don't care what anybody says. That was one of the best albums we ever put out, mm. and still stands up. Well, let's go to uh, one of my personal favorites uh, off that album, which is also uh, one of the songs on Shady 15, The Setup, featuring Nate Dogg. Like, it was just ridiculous. Um, the Dre beat, just everything, just... Yeah, kinda... that's a classic Dre beat in my book. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It was, he, Dre had a couple classics on that album, for real. Let's get into it. The Shady Records Roundtable R.I.P. Nate Dogg. R.I.P. Nate Dogg. Absolutely. And then Paul Rosenberg ah! on the Shady 15 Roundtable Special. Oh, 
I'm a man eater. Oh, here I come. My John Boy, I'll peel him up. Oh, here you come. I'm a man beater. J45. Oh, we are back. <laughs> Ken Kniff, man. He's crazy. Shouts to Ken. <laughs> Shout to Ken Kniff, man. Where did he go? He he I, left. <laughs> went to the men's bathroom. <laughs> oh. Welcome back to the Shady Records Roundtable Special, celebrating 15 years of Shady Records uh, and the release of Shady XV, Shady 15, on November 24th, and also celebrating uh, 10 years of Shade 45. Now, I want to just fast forward real quick. Uh, to around 2004, where everything is popping. And once again, uh, you know, you're making platinum albums for yourself. The artists, everything is, is, is going incredibly. And you guys do kind of like the unthinkable again, stepping out into a business venture that I don't think really had been done before, which is a radio station. Branded, branded to you. We have a radio station. Yeah, hell yeah. Where, where is it? Yo, at? we got a radio station. Where's it at? High five. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where, where is it? Let's see it. <laughs> That's right. Come on, yeah. prove it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, look, it, it's 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 kind of like the record company thing, but but it's sort of you know it, it it's a little different because it wasn't what we had set out to do necessarily. Not saying that you know we don't love it and and want to continue for as long as we can, but. The opportunity it. came. <laughs> the opportunity came to us. Ken, he's back. <laughs> so, so you know, I think um, you know some some of the uh, people who are still executives here had a good relationship with Jimmy Iovine, um, former former CEO. It sounds weird saying former CEO of Interscope, and they came to Jimmy. Jimmy and them were talking, and Jimmy said, "We want to do you know an Interscope record label. We don't have the restrictions that commercial radio has because people are paying, so we can play our own records. Let's mm -hmm. do Interscope radio." And they were like, "Look, you know, I, I, we don't know that the brand is what people want as much as the music, but you do have an artist on your label that we think has the brand and the music, and we'd love to do a channel with Eminem." So they came to me, and I was like, "Huh? You want to do a radio like our own radio station?" And it was just serious at the time. They hadn't joined up with XM yet, so there was competition. And I think that, you know, there was other artists doing other stuff over on XM. And they, and they were like, no, that. we're serious. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It was so right there, man. Sometimes you just got to go for it. It's all about timing, man. Yeah. Timing. I was so, trying to, I was waiting for the break in the conversation. I was going to say it like right when you said it, and then I didn't want to interrupt and be rude. So I went to my partner, Marshall, and I said, hey, they want to give us a radio station. And he said... You serious? <laughs> and here we are. Uh, you know, I think what, what you've done with this and most of the ventures that you guys do, you're never lending your likeness or your name or whatever. If, if you're involved with it, yeah. you're committed. You're involved. Yeah, but that's, we, we, don't do, we don't get involved in that much stuff for, just for that reason. Because when we do, we go full, full in and give it everything we have. So... You can't do that with everything, and everything doesn't make sense to do that with. So this was an opportunity um, to to do that, and you know, have a create a further platform, not just for our artists, but the goal was okay. Yeah, you're going to hear more Eminem music on Shade Forty Five. Of course, it's his radio station. You're going to hear more Shady artists on, on on Shade Forty Five because it's our radio station. But it was an excuse to just play our shit all day. No, it, it really <laughs> it, it beyond that. It went beyond that because we talked about this. Let's get the we brass said, taxes. We did. We said we, we get to have a radio station. Like we got to play all the stuff that we always want to hear that other people don't play. Yep. So that's that was the other goal. So there's sort of three aspects of it. There's the Eminem music. There's the Shady stuff. And then there's what would a radio station sound like. If we could create, if we got a hold of it, yeah, in our own image <laughs> and hear what we want to hear that wasn't on the radio at that time. And we've stuck to that quite successfully, I might add. Uh, I want to take you as a treat, both both to you and to the listeners. Uh, I have a little, you know, we went into the archives and we've dug up a whole bunch of stuff. And what I'm going to play you very quickly here is uh, I don't like it. It's, <laughs> but I don't it's like you. it and I don't like where this is going. It's a freestyle, a portion of a freestyle from your first appearance here on Shade 45 with Proof, Rest in Peace, and uh, Green Lantern. And make the worst, verse at verse, when not this. Uh, Shady XV, I want to move up kind of kind of into the uh, into the more present Shady Records uh, with Yellow Wolf. And uh, I'm going to play Yellow Wolf, Let's Roll, featuring Kid Rock, and we'll be back on the Shady Records Roundtable Special. Shady 15 Roundtable Special, featuring Eminem and Paul Rosenberg.
Hey yo, this is Slim Shady. Shade 45 is my radio station. Shade 45 is the way to go. Shade 45 is our radio station. Shade 45, cause I said so. Hey. <laughs> Man, when do you record all the of this shit? The greatest shit is so not no remembering. <laughs> the greatest shit is not remembering. That one wasn't that old. No, no but that I'm one saying, I, like, I'll be, I'm listening to the radio sometimes. I'll listen to Shade 45. When that's I'm the in the first car, one. Like, when did you do all this shit? That's the first one I remember. <laughs> that's the first one I remember. Um, and we were just listening to Yellow Wolf, Let's Roll, featuring Kid Rock. Yes. And uh, let's talk about Yellow Wolf. And, you know, he represents the new wave of artists on shady records and kind of, you know, both of you, your guys thought process on what made you feel like this guy fits for us. So, um, I can't remember exactly how, um, we had heard that, that Wolf was, was available and looking for a new situation. But, um, I think the first thing that we saw and heard was, um, from, from his newer stuff was pop the trunk and he had released it independently and put a video out. And that really caught our attention. And um, I started talking to Marshall about it. And Marshall, one of Marshall's friends, actually, I think, was talking to him about Yellow Wolf at the same time. So we, we were both, you know, finding our own path towards, towards you know, being interested and seeing if this would be a good fit for us. Yeah, I think the first record was uh, Pop the Trunk that I heard. And I don't know, I feel like Yellow Wolf is, there's, there's nobody like him. There, there was nobody like him when I first heard him. And there's still not anybody like him. Like he's kind of got his own lane, it feels like, and um, yeah, I mean, look, we we've we've found ourselves as a label to really primarily focus on the sort of really technical aspects of of rappers because I think that's what Marshall does and is a fan of, and that's what I've always been a fan of too. So we fo focus first and foremost on you know people artists that can really really rap, and we thought we saw that in Yellow Wolf for sure. And then his whole story um, is, you know, extremely interesting and we thought would, would have a lot of appeal. And we had never really worked with too much stuff from the South. I mean, we, we had worked with um, uh, Stat previously and, and, and Creek, but um, for one reason or another, it didn't work out. So here was another opportunity to do something from a different region that we thought would have a matching sort of aesthetic with our brand, which was, you know, an important aspect of signing any artist to our label. You mentioned something very important, which kind of relates to our next topic. Uh, the technical aspects of, you know, the art of emceeing. Wait, and Jim, Jim, uh, out. Jim Johnson, actually, that was the, you were talking about a friend told me about. Yeah. Well, I, I had given the music to, to, to your buddy. Oh, that okay. doesn't work in the music industry. Okay. And he was talking to you about him. And then Jim came in the studio. You were working on, on stuff for um for recovery, right? With Jim. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So Jim Johnson showed me the Yellow Wolf video. And that was the first time I got to see an image, too. You know, like the you see the you get to see a visual with the with the song. You know, it, it's also with Wolf. It's also, you know, lyrical content. And and can somebody can somebody go like can they? You know, that that's to me, that's like, like Paul was saying, that's what what we always focus on first. It's like, can somebody really can can they spit? And, and I don't even know if you can say spit anymore. But mm. whatever, I say it, yeah. man, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's absolutely to me the most important thing, you know, to Paul, too, is like, you know, and then we kind of it's exciting to work with with w when you find somebody who's unique they can rap, they've got content, they're about something, you know, and then it's okay. Now, what can we do to try to help this? You know? Right. Now you mentioned, you know, MCs that really can rap the technical aspects of the, you know, the art. And, uh, I, I think you can't go any further than without mentioning slaughterhouse for guys that can really rap and that are indicative of the art of MC. And, uh, you know, they are, uh, featured on the Shady 15 project. Yeah. Uh, from the, the song, um, Hammer Dance from the Welcome to Our House on Shady Records. And, uh, I, I think it, it speaks for itself in terms of their, their abilities as individuals and a group coming together <clears throat> like Voltron, kind of. Yeah. It, it's, it's, Slaughterhouse is an interesting, it's a unique situation because it's, it's four top tier MCs to me that, that they're like fucking top notch, you know, they they're incredibly 
incredibly strong soloists, you know. That can stand on their own. That can stand on their own anywhere. So, I mean, with anybody. So it's like them being really their solo artists. So them to come together and form a group, it's like, to me, it's like a fucking super group because it's like you've got four of four of some of the best rappers in the world, to me, coming together as one group. I mean, I don't know. That's a pretty fucking strong group, you know? Totally. So let's let's go into Hammer Dance here on the Shady Records Roundtable Special here on Shade 45. Team Roundtable Special featuring Eminem and Paul Rosenberg. Happy 10-year anniversary, Shade 45. Happy birthday to all of us except who kid. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yo, I didn't even know that was me at first. <laughs> so it, we are. It's, it's been ten years, like so quick, right? Well, yeah, ten years is. It seems very quick, but we'd known you prior to that, right? Oh, so probably thirteen years we've known you now. Yeah, who yeah, kid's man, been right stealing my out. music for? Yeah. Uh, well, we, we for well over going. a decade. No, no, no. But uh, fifteen years uh, with the with the way hip hop is now, you guys always been like number one with. Being lyrical, you, you, it's kind of risky. You mean in terms of what we were focused on? Yeah, no, to take to take the risk of always being lyrical, but not we try it. to be lyrical, miracle, spiritual individuals. Hey. Yeah, but think about it, right? I mean, I, I, and I don't, you know, Marshall, you don't have to say any of this because this is how I feel. But I still think that the the most popular rappers um are the rappers who are the best rappers. Okay, so that's never changed. So the the one hit wonders or or the guys that survive from one hits. And they just like still lingering. I mean, some of them can rap, but you look at a guy like Jay-Z, right? A lot yeah. of people argue he's the best rapper of all time. You look at a guy like Eminem. Some people argue he's the best rapper of all mm -hmm. time. You got guys like Drake. You got guys like Kendrick. You got guys like Lil Wayne. All those dudes can rap really fucking well. Mm -hmm. So I think our focus was always on point. Enough said. Absolutely. It's hard to get into your label, huh? There's a lot of whack rappers out there. Well, <laughs> you know what it is? It's not that it's hard to get into our label. We, we've always wanted to be boutique. We never wanted to be a big label. Yeah. And it, it more so, to, to the point of it, is both Marshall and myself are so hands-on with our projects that we don't have time to do that many of them. Mm. So the cycle usually works like this. M will do one of his records, and then he'll take a couple of years and work on stuff on the label and go back to one of his own records. So those couple of years, we got to be able to get everything done. And the last time we did it, we put out Yellow Wolf, Slaughterhouse, and Bad Meets Evil. Mm. So this time, we're putting out the Shady 15 Project. We got the Yellow Wolf album coming out early next year, followed by a Slaughterhouse album. So the cycle's there, but we don't want to take on more than we can really you know, put our fingerprints on and, and, and make the best we think we can do. Well, yeah, because uh, Paul already makes my life miserable enough, so... <laughs> Then it's like, you know, if we sign something else after we haven't done what we need to do with the other two groups right. that we have right mm. now. There's backup and then stuff might not come out and then nobody's happy. Because in, in my side, I, I've always looked into you guys as a fan, but then I've, I've learned the business aspect of understanding the value of like holding it in and keeping like, because, you know, a good friend of yours, uh, Kendrick Lamar, kind of like he said, he's not coming out until his shit is official. Right. So he said he learned by... We all learned that from Dre, though, to be honest with oh, you. Oh, okay. Because yeah. Dre, more so than anybody, time doesn't exist for Dr. Dre. And when I say that, I mean, mm. you know, oh, well, you got to put your album out, in, you know, from fourth quarter so you can get Christmas sales. He doesn't right. care. You got to put your album out this time because <laughs> such and such is going to happen and the world's going to catch fire. He doesn't care about anything except making sure the music's right. Okay. So we learned that from him. Nothing else matters because you put the shit out because of some external pressure and it's not ready. You ain't going to have another shot to put it out. So you got to make sure everything's right. That's the most important thing. What we've learned to do, though, is we've learned to say, OK, we need to give ourselves a lot of time because we know how long it's going to take. <laughs> so we, one of the things we really pride ourselves on is we don't really move our release dates oh, okay. much. We have in the past, but not much. Like when we say something's coming out, it's coming out. We do whatever the hell we need to do to get that record out. You've ever got stressed by him? Like he wants to come out, but you're oh, telling, me? No, never. You're telling him, no, no, no I don't never. Want no. <laughs> well, speaking of, he's telling the truth. <laughs> speaking of the material and, and, and release dates and so forth, November 24th is Shady 15 in stores, and it Woo! features new music, obviously from Eminem. And I, I don't think we should go any further without Let's getting into it. What else is there, though? There's Eminem records, there's, there's M &M, Bad Meets there's Evil, there's Slaughterhouse, Bad there's Meets D12, Evil. the first D12 song in a very long time. How many years has it been, Denon? Wow. Shit. 
<laughs> seven? Seven years. First D12 song in seven years. And it's a banger. Damn. Um, and, you know, Slaughterhouse yep. and Yellow Wolf. And, you know, uh, we got a record with, with Skylar, who's an unofficial sort of shady family member. Mm-hmm. Um, you it's know. like a little sister. Yeah, so we got we got everybody on the album is is closely affiliated or from Detroit. So oh yeah, we're gonna get to that. Uh, so let's get into guts over fear. Let's Featuring equalize it. See ya. Roundtable special featuring Eminem and Paul Rosenberg. This is Ken. Touch my body. Touch my body. Touch my body. Touch my body. Little boy, little boy, little boy. Little boy, little boy, little boy. That's my crazy. You listening to Shade 45, you understand me? That was an actual promo on our radio station? Yes, it was. Oh, I like that. What the Yo, you know what's funny? <laughs> Yo, when, when, like, wh- how many years ago was that? Like, five years, six years ago? That? When I did, I know, oh, I, I don't know when that was. That's, about, that's about nine years there ago. There was a bunch of them, though. Yeah. That I did. Where, where are those at? Dude, we got all of it. We got all of it. I wanted to kind of, oh. you know, this is a little little trip through memory lane of, uh. What is it? Memory? Memory lane. <laughs> Mel- memory <laughs> lane. Mentally, 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 mentally lane. lane. As we move on. Uh, we are celebrating 15 years of Shady Records and the release of the Shady 15 project in stores November 24th, as well as 10 years of Shade 45. And the release. I am here with mm-hmm. Marshall and Paul. Yes. Two swell guys. And uh, <laughs> I want to clarify something. Yes. It's a double disc if we're talking about the physical Yo, CD. Verify and clarify. Speak on it. Speak on it. Okay. It's what I was doing. Oh, okay. Um, so Y'all was trying to give you an official... Thank you. Like, yeah, you know no, that's good, thanks. So it's a, it's a double disc. <laughs> One disc is of all new music, of all the current artists on the label, plus some you know friends, friends and family. <laughs> Gotta wave it off. <laughs> and it's, the second disc is the uh, shady sort of greatest hits and <laughs> some of the some of the you know I think some of the biggest records that we had put out. And we could we didn't have room for all of them, oh. um, and we wanted to do fifteen songs on the greatest hits and i want to also point out one other thing this is the 15th Woo! album that we're releasing on the label coincidentally ah 15th a, album 15 wow. years it's a lot of music wow for you know a couple of dudes from detroit to put out it's a lot to be proud of i mean yep um so i want to talk about a record and play a record that uh kind of made my face grow up upon first hearing it uh it's those slaughterhouse guys again and this time they're with the man the legend dj premier Yes. And the song Ooh. is entitled Y'all Already Know. Crazy. And Y'all Ooh. already know. Y'all already know, excuse me. And man, oh man. Oh. Man, oh man. <laughs> this is this record reminds me of like the reasons that we that we wanted to sign Slaughterhouse in the first place. Yeah. It's just like a straight, hard rap beat that is just pure and and created for nothing other than dudes to rap really well on. And and it just feels good to, to listen to and we love it. Well, you know. Woo! Without further ado, y'all Woo! already know. <laughs> Woo! Go! Slaughterhouse! Yeah. Yo, yo. Shady 15, roundtable special. Hey, yo, it's the new Rocky thing. His palms are sweaty. Knees weak, arms are heavy. The vomit on his sweater already. <laughs> Rising up, back on the street. <laughs> yeah. Took my time, took my chances. It's the eye of the tiger. In the music, the moment you own it. J45, bitch. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Welcome back to the Shady Records Roundtable Special. What do you think of that one? I don't know. Where was I when all this was happening? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, you know, we, we have our ways. I don't remember that particularly, but I'm funny. <laughs> you are. At least, hold on. At least I was. I was funny. I, I, think, I think you still have a lot left. Thanks, man. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, Doug. Here on the Shady Records Roundtable Special, I'm here with Marshall and Paul. We are talking all things Shady, 15 years in the game. Let's listen to another new one, though. Yeah. Okay, this song is called Twisted. It is uh, myself, Skylar Gray, and Yellow Wolf. Yeller! Who produced it? I did. Yeah. All right. Woo! Myself did. <laughs> myself Hi, did. Hi, myself. I heard he's really dope. He's good. He's great on the beats. Here it is, you know twisted. I mean? Only on Shade Forty Five. Oh, Rosenberg. 
this is Slim Shady. Shit for the faith, shit for the faith. This is my station, this is, this is my station. Shit for the faith, shit for the faith. I love satellite radio, I, I, I love satellite radio. I like that. Turn your radio up. Lady. That was for the clubs. EDM right there. Yeah. Yeah. It's yo, per- perfect for what you're playing these really days. Is. That is the full version. <laughs> wow. The full version is actually on the greatest hits right. on Shady, Fif- Shady 15. Yeah. And we're back. <laughs> and we are talking Shady 15 on the Shady Records Roundtable special here on Shade 45. I am with Marshall Mathers, a.k.a. Eminem. Back. So, Eminem, where do you find your inspiration? <laughs> back. <laughs> back. Back and back. Back. What if that's how all interviews turned out? <laughs> there was a time when all interviews did turn out like that, my friend. <laughs> and man, was it fun. Fun times, man. That was fun. Uh, you know, if there's one thing that I personally admire about you both oh. is, uh, you know, you've always... Stupid. I'm being serious here for a moment. I'm sorry. You have always given it up for your hometown. Mm. There is Detroit it's right there, tattooed on the shoulder. Like there is no doubt where you're from, what it's all about, the pride in, you know, your hometown and your upbringings. Absolutely, man. And it, it brings us to the last song here uh, that we're going to talk about, which is um, it's it's quite a it's quite a lineup here on the Shady 15 uh project um it's new material and just there's a great story behind it in terms of the making of the record but i just want to read the lineup real quick the song is entitled detroit versus everybody featuring eminem royce the five nine big sean damn danny brown damn and a newcomer dej loaf damn dej loaf and let's not forget trick trick and trick trick of course better not and uh produced by shade 45's own static selector <laughs> yep and myself and Marshall. Yep. Yeah. You know, let's talk about this real quick. Let's talk about it, man. <laughs> let's talk about so, it. So, so what? What? What had happened was, um, Royce and I were were talking about the idea of making this record. With, Yo, verify and clarify. Yeah, Royce and I were talking about the idea of making this record. Of course, it was inspired by the 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 brand um, that Tommy Walker and and his team started in Detroit called Detroit versus Everybody. We've been doing collaborations with them for the past couple of years with Shady doing the shady versus everybody stuff and they're really good guys and, and, and the brand has grown and we just had this idea um, to, to possibly make this Detroit versus everybody record. So obviously we wanted to present the idea to Marshall, but before we did um, I think we, we wanted to find a track. So, mm-hmm. you know, one day I was listening to our station and this happens a lot. Actually, it's really strange. I'll hear stuff on our station that I didn't know about and you know, something will come out of it. So in this case, it was during Static Selector's show, and he was playing the sample for that we ended up using for the song. And I heard, I heard the, the the original, and he was playing it because it said "static" in it, the the word "static." And so he was playing it as part of his show. And so I hit him. I was like, "Yo, did you ever make a beat out of that sample? Like, if you didn't, you should and you should send it to me." And he was like, "I got one that I've been working on. I'm gonna send it to you." So he sent it to me, and I was like, "Man, this is this this might be you know perfect for this idea." So I sent it to Royce. And next thing I know, he's like, uh, I got a verse on it, and I'm going to get Dej Loaf to come in and, and do something on it, too. So that was the sort of foundation of the record. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, the caliber of the Detroit MC. Let's talk about that for a sec, because there's really a lot to be said about it. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, M's not going to say it, but, but, but I'll say it. I, I think that when you hear that a rapper's from Detroit, there's certain things that you know are going to come along with it, right? Mm-hmm. You know they're going to be hard. Mm-hmm. You know that they're going to be able to rap. You know, you know that's going to be ha- that, that it's going to be hardcore. You know that they're going to be able to rap, and you know that it's not going to be on some bullshit. That for me, whenever I hear somebody from Detroit, those things I know are automatic, right? So, you know, there, there's this breed of MC that I think came out of the city, and it comes from the same sort of you know pride that you were talking about earlier that we have in the city. People rep it so hard. And it's because I think it was overlooked for so long. It's in, in terms of hip-hop, the city was overlooked for a very long time because not that many things had broken out of there. So people really, really tried to rap extremely well for a very long time to get attention, a la the guy sitting next to me. Right? Mm. 
So I think that that is where a lot of the core of these guys that are, you know, even still coming up now comes from. It was like this quest to, you know, get recognized and it forced people to be to to become really good MCs. It feels like it's, you know, it's it's always felt like it kind of still feels like um, in regards to what Paul is talking about. It feels like we've always been the underdog. Yeah, you know, in the city, yeah, in the city remains an, an underdog status for, for you know for obvious reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, given that mentality, I think that it inspired and inspires people still to this day to try to, you know, rappers, you know, to try to rap as, you know, as well as they can. Yeah, yeah, and prove people wrong. I mean, that's what the underdog does, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think Shady has championed the underdog. Shady is the underdog. Yeah, mm. you know, Fifty Cent was an outlaw, was a blacklisted underdog that nobody ever gave a chance in hell yep. to to shine. And I think you could say the same for for Obi in a way, uh, you know, on on down the line. And it, you know, it represents kind of your commitment to championing those underdogism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this so this song is is you know just obviously you know some some of the artists that 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 we really like and and. You know, just a way to sort of bring that whole mentality that we were talking about and describing in, into a record. No, that does it feel good that, you know, you guys always been the entity of Detroit, but now there's other elements. Yes. That are, yeah. It's like a movement now. Where Very good. Atlanta, Philly, Florida, New York always had multiple artists, multiple movements. But finally, you guys have other elements where yes. it, it brings Detroit like a little energy now. Like you guys are doing that shit. It's about motherfucking time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and, and to that point, I, I've said this before, but there was a time where, you know, there was other artists in in Detroit that were trying to do, you know, some of the things that, that we had done or, or, you know, wanted to get their own stories. And somebody said to us, you know, a few people said to us, like, man, it's it's tough for us to get on out there because people look at us like, well, if Shady ain't fucking with you, then you're probably, yeah. you know, not that good. And we never wanted that. Like mm-hmm. that that's not that's not what we, what we set out to do. So for us to see people making their own way and doing their own their, their own stories, um, I think is 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 a great thing. And so you see, you know, a guy like Big Sean mm. and you see somebody like Danny Brown, you see you see Dave Loaf, you know, all doing their own things their way. Um, it's great. It must be mind boggling too, because they've all kind of like wished that they they've done a record with M and <laughs> I mean, we. I've, I've interviewed I mean, no, all of them. I'm not going to say that, but no, but, but I've interviewed all of them, and they've all mentioned it in every interview. Well, here's so, here's the record. Is. Evan Paul Rosenberg. Shit. Queef. <laughs> On shade forty five. <laughs> <laughs> Now that might be my favorite one. <laughs> that was a good one. That was, thank God for for satellite radio, man. <laughs> because genius things like that would never be able to to be heard on a radio station nationwide. Yeah, worldwide. And it's something to be proud of. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, man. It just it it feels it's bringing a tear to my eye right now. <laughs> just oh. one word, queef, can just do all that. Right. It's amazing. It's well, fucked up. Those are tears of name, joy, my friend. That your name rhymes. With Don't that. get it twisted. This is not some soft that, shit. Yo, you might have been the inspiration for Queef. I, tears of I, joy. I think because I, I might have been thinking of your name and trying to think of things to rhyme with it. <laughs> queef the streets. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friends, yeah. what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Reef? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is yo. This is good, clean fun for the whole family. I just absolutely. And hey, congrats to you, my my friend, uh, Reef, for you know Thank being you. with us here since the beginning. You um, know, I I, I really ten appreciate years it. of of putting up with this bullshit. <laughs> you know, I'll never and, forget. I'll never forget the meeting I had with you in your office on a Sunday at, at Shady Records mm. when you said to me. <laughs> Come down. We we need to talk about something. Uh, I'm like, okay, you know. And the he first, said, let's talk about talking. No, the, the the first thing you said was, we have a radio station. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. And boy, <laughs> and, and boy, was I right. Oh yeah. Ten years later. 
We are here. We're here. Yeah, and I just want to uh, apologize to everyone out there. For? For this. For the 10 years of yeah. radio? <laughs> <laughs> for, for all of it. And the 15 years of? For this whole radio station thing, torturing people. Oh. <laughs> all right. Hey, here's to another 10. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> Oh, Shady and here's 15. To, and, yes, and here's to another 10. Shady 15 in stores November 24th. And to another 15, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. This has been the Shady 15 Roundtable Special. This program is available on Sirius XM On Demand and the Sirius XM app. Thanks for listening.